Hello, I'm Junior Bajini and welcome to this series in which I'm going to be bringing philosophy into my kitchen and hopefully into yours too. Now, cooking and philosophising might strike you as a very odd and perhaps surprising combination, but I think that Briat Savarin, the great French writer, was onto something when he said that to know how to eat is to know how to live. And one of the purposes of this series is to try and convince you that that somewhat unlikely claim might actually be true. What I'm going to be doing is sharing some of the things that I cook with you, but I'm not going to be giving you recipes as such. Indeed, I think that recipes are actually part of the problem we have with our food culture, and understanding why provides some insight into some important philosophical truths too. Now, don't get me wrong, I use recipes myself. I mean, here are some of the books that I sometimes delve into, and they're all very good. The problem is we know though that just simply giving people more recipes doesn't make them cook more on an everyday basis and bring really good food into their daily lives. Indeed there have been surveys that suggest that up to 40% of all cookbooks are never even opened and that even people who use their books cook about four recipes from each book that they own. Now you don't actually need recipes to make all sorts of things. Take hummus. Now hummus is an example of what I call one of those simple but infinitely variable dishes. Every culture has them. Take things like minestrone soup, dal, porridge. You know there are as many ways of making these things as there are people who make them and the people who make them don't follow a recipe. They rely on their, their habits and their memory and the things they've learned over the years. So here's how I make mine. These are the basic ingredients, olive oil and tahini, either or both, salt, lemon, garlic, and chickpeas. Now the question is, in what proportion? The answer is, it depends on how you like it, and even what happens to be in your cupboard that day. Of course, you have to have some idea of general proportions, but this is not exact science. Take the lemons. I can't say exactly how many to use. Some lemons are bigger, juicier, bitterer than others. You just add them to taste. All you've got to do now is blend it, except that I like to make mine a little bit spicy. So what I add is a bit of pimenton, which is a kind of spicy smoked paprika. And um, I tend to be a bit generous with this, but probably shouldn't do more than that. And the other thing is cumin. Now I've toasted a bit already just in a dry pan like that. And I've got a grinder. So I'm going to grind that in. Actually, that looks like loads. I've already made it too cumin-y. Okay. Now, this is quite thick, right? Um, if you get the very runny tahini you can get from Middle Eastern delis, it often is a bit thinner. But I actually don't object to putting a little bit of water into mine, actually, just to make it a little bit lighter and smoother in consistency. Okay, so let's give it a bit of a taste. That's pretty good, actually. I'm going to... a bit, bit more salt. Now, no one in the Middle East who would make hummus in a traditional home would have ever followed a recipe. It's the same in all the great food cultures. People develop their judgment. They learn by experience. Things are passed down. I mean, I've got Italian family, for example, you know, and my aunts, they never follow a recipe, you know, once in a blue moon making a special cake or something. Now, recipes are examples of algorithms. These are rule-based step-by-step procedures in order to achieve a certain desired outcome. Now they have their place, but the problem is when we depend upon them too much, we depend less on something else we need, which is called phronesis in ancient Greek or practical wisdom. This is the ability to make good judgments, but according to context with sensitivity to the specifics of the occasion without having to just lean back on a rule book. 
Now, in the kitchen with recipes, if we sort of become too beholden to them, we become like the ant in the film A Bug's Life. I don't know if you've seen that. It's a wonderful scene where the row of ants are going along and a, a leaf drops in their way and the ant doesn't know what to do anymore. You know, its rule book says, follow the ant in front of me. A leaf comes down, it's completely shocked. And that's the kind of problem we have in life in general if we rely too much on procedures. We need to develop the ability to have flexibility and adapt to different circumstances. So, for example, you know, you want to make something like this, you haven't got any chickpeas, what do you do? Well, actually, you know what, you can make a very good dip out of pretty much any legume. I mean, there's one, I've got some cannellini beans here, and there's a very simple one I can make with this, which I'm going to do in a minute. <laughs> Not being dependent on strict formulas is also important in life more broadly. There is no algorithm for living well. There is no moral calculus. And rules are at best only rules of thumb that cannot be applied unthinkingly. Now in the kitchen, some people think that improvisation is for talented cooks only. This just isn't true. I'm a very simple cook. As you can see, I don't have a particularly well-equipped kitchen. I don't do many things the proper way. Real cooks would be appalled to see me chopping on a glass board, for example, because it blunts the knives. But, you know, frankly, I've only got cheap knives and I just use a sharpener. So I say inside and outside of the kitchen, tear up the recipes. Don't rely on rigid rules. Work on developing good judgment that's sensitive to context. The results are going to be imperfect, but you know, like my dips are, they're not the ideal. But then life is imperfect, and I think what we can learn is that less than perfect can often be more than good enough. Endless shots of me grinding cumin by hand. Quite nice this, but it does take time. <laughs>